God, I've been wanting to uh, do another video like this. This is a video on making colloidal silver because I make colloidal silver all the time and uh, it gets used in our house and then we have to make more colloidal silver. I have been doing this for a really, really, really long time. I've given away generators and I wanted to show one thing. We have to do a couple of processes. One, we have these old, been used before, solid, you can look at this, right? Let's get it up close to the camera. These are Sunshine Mint 900 and 9999 fine. That is the kind of silver, you can't use any other kind of silver because it will strip heavy metals into your water. Here's the other one. See this one? Okay. Now these were used and you're supposed to keep them like this so that you can tell the difference when you pull them out of the bag, which one you want to clip on. One is pulling silver off more one is being the conductor, okay? And we're gonna take these with a little green scratchy pad and we're going to clean them up with some plain water and then we're gonna dry those up. But I wanted to show people something else too because the other day I found something I have a lot of little weird things that I've saved over the years. This is, if we can see it on the scale, let's turn the scale on, okay? And we're gonna weigh it. How much is that? That's 1.1, which is a little suspicious to me. Let's weigh the one that we just used. We've been using this one for a long, long time. So you can see that the amount of silver that has been stripped off of this one is just minuscule. I've had these for seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 years. And each one of them still is about one ounce of silver, okay? I could use this one, but let me tell you the story about this one. This piece that's on there, my boyfriend was a mechanic. He was an Amtrak mechanic, and I loved him very much. He's no longer on this world with us. But um, when we were together, I was already storing silver and making colloidal silver. That's how long I've been doing it. And this is like 17 years or more. And so he was so sweet because I had bought all this new silver and I wanted to make colloidal silver. And I wanted to have a flattened piece of silver so that I could cut it with some tin snips. And so I put my piece of silver on the track and he was so kind. He rolled the train over it <laughs> and flattened it out. Now it's still pretty thick. I can't even cut it, but I might. I was trying to cut it, you know, I wanted it actually to get it to be uh, wire. But the fact of the matter is that smashing it with the train just, I don't know, it got dirty and I'm really not excited to use it now. I have to use the pure silver, but that's why I have this. And I dug it out the other day and my son said to me, oh, that thing again, it's back. And it is back. Okay, so I am going to scrub these pieces up. We're gonna scrub these pieces up. Then we're gonna come back and we are going to use that jar and some water to make colloidal silver. Okay, we're back. We have our 
colloidal silver generator. And now if in our last little session, what I said was that we didn't, we will leave the silver with the, with the uh, coating on it. And then what we're gonna do is what was the black coating last time um, we could probably flip it over and have a look. Yeah, that was a little more black on that side. We're going to make that the negative, okay? And the one that was a little cleaner this time, we're going to make that one the positive. That way, we, we switch it. We keep switching it from side to side on the batteries, and we'll know which, uh, which one we used the last time. Then when we're done, first of all, we're going to use distilled water, right? Distilled water. Never use any other kind of water. It has to be distilled. Distilled water is what's known as pure water. Pretty much that's the rain comes down and it's supposed to be distilled, but it's not anymore because there's so much pollution, which is horrible. And then the other thing that we have is we have a jar. Okay, nice amber jar. It's got colloidal silver in it. You need an amber jar to store it because silver is photosynthesizing. Photosynth uh, so if you could imagine um, something that's a photosynthesizer, think about black and white film. Okay, black and white film was basically liquefied silver spread between two um, two pieces of film and rolled together like that. And then when it was exposed to the light in the background, it would pick up because the silver would, when it hit the light, wherever the silver was, it would hit the film there. And that's how we started black and white photography. Pretty cool. I actually do a lot of black and white photography. I love it. I can develop my own film. But now I have a camera phone. I don't have to get all messy in a dark room. Yay. Okay, I'm going to go and get the batteries because we are going to need some batteries next. One of the things that every prepper should have is batteries, right? I know. These are evil Amazon batteries. I wish I didn't have them. But when I was still ordering from Amazon, I had these set up on an auto placed order. And every six months I would get a box of Amazon batteries. And so I have a whole bunch of them. I don't need to because I canceled my Amazon. I'm never ordering from Amazon again. So we'll use another ordering system next time. But these four batteries are clipped together in what is known as a series of batteries, okay? They're nine volt, so if we add them up, we have nine volt, and nine volt is 18 volt, and nine volt is 27 volt, and nine volt is 36. Now, in reality, we only need a 28 or 29 volt battery, but they don't sell a half of a, you know, they don't sell a four volt battery, nine volts is the smallest that you can. And they have them like this because they can be used to clip together. All right, now, as I've gotten older, it's become more difficult for me to actually open up this. So I have a little squeezy thing now that I can do it with because it's tight. Look at it. It's an, this is known as an alligator clip. It's a very tight clip, but it works perfectly. So I use my alligator clip to grab onto my piece of silver. Now I've got to remember that that alligator clip is not silver, so it can't hang in the water. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the red one. I'm going to clip it, make it big, and then I'm going to put it in here like that. Oh, that one quite won't, doesn't want to quite go. There we go. Oh, that one got pretty smashed too. Don't care. It's going to work. All right. We are going to fill 
the jar with distilled water. That's fine. Now, toothpick, nope, chopstick. <laughs> I should be in practicing my chopsticks on the piano right now. So we're gonna put one on, and then we're gonna put the other one on. Then we're gonna test to make sure that the alligator clips are not in the water. Okay, they aren't. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our tool, and we're gonna hook up this one, make sure, see where it says the positive one? Okay, we wanna clip this open and get that right on there. Okay, doesn't even have to be open that wide. All right, that should be okay. We're just gonna set it up here. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna do exactly the same thing with the negative one then once we got it clipped on we can check to make sure I'm going to straighten this out so that it's going to be easier to clip I'm not too concerned this is not like a car battery where you could explode it we just want it to be on there and pretty secure. There we go. Ooh, that one went on nice. All right. Let's make sure they're all severe. Okay. That looks great to me. Okay, so now what we want to do is just let's look and make sure that nothing is touching. No. Okay. They are actually close enough together, but they aren't touching each other. You don't want them touching each other because what you want is the electricity from the battery traveling through the water. And you want enough of that silver covered, but not touching those alligator clips at all. So we can keep filling. There we go. All right, that's perfect. Now what I am gonna do is I am going to go and find my other phone and we are gonna plug this in in a little while and we're gonna do a slow motion video because that is gonna sit in the water like that for 24 hours and I am very curious what exactly that's gonna do but I have a few more things to film before we start filming what happens with the colloidal silver. And it's gonna take a little while. I think I might wanna put more water in it. Yep. Oh, it's already stripping off. Ha <laughs> ha Lovely. I could see the sheen on the surface of the water already of the silver coming in. Okay. That's it, we are not filling any more water in with that. But the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little cover because we don't want any buggies. Who knows, there could be a fly that's attracted to shiny things. Or, you know, if you're in a part of the country where you have magpies, the magpie might come in and grab the silver off of your table. I don't think that's ever gonna happen, but you know. We should not mess around if we can. We should just create a cover and we can cover it a little bit. Nah, you know, we can't really see it that way. Though. No, I don't wanna do that. I wanna just leave it like that. It's open, I'll keep an eye on it. Nothing's gonna get in there. Anything that gets in there is gonna die. That's for sure. Anyway, so that is how we make colloidal silver. And uh, we're gonna set that there for 24 hours. And we're gonna set up a video so that it can be filmed. 
And then we are gonna walk away and let that film and see what it looks like in 24 hours. I think that's gonna be a fun. This is a fun science experiment for sure. Thank you very much. This is Heather Hill with, with uh, Texas, Texas Micro Farms. And we are doing experiments with uh, healthy things like we always do every single day, all day long. So join us on our Rumble, uh, on our Rumble account, which is Heather1964. Or you can find Texas Micro Farms on our YouTube also. Thank you. Okay, uh, wow, that is really done. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna carefully pour that through a coffee filter. And what I'm gonna do, it's gonna take a while to pour that through because you can see how how dark that's gotten. And you know, that was just from today. And the reason why it's looking that way is because of what I said earlier, that it is um, photosynthetic. It, you know, it actually is picking up the, um, I need to find my rubber band. It's picking up the silver and changing color because it's not in a dark glass. We're gonna be able to filter all of that out. But um, that, I was worried about those batteries, right? Because they were the Amazon batteries. That just absolutely ripped that in. So we're gonna disconnect it. All right. And look at what happened. Let's see if you can tell. Let's look up here. Look inside. See how there's, there's actually silver floating on the top. Okay. Oop. Those are silver floating in it. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take those out and like I was saying earlier we're not going to clean that silver right now we're just going to take it out of here put it down I want that silver in there though I shouldn't dip that in. It got all over everything. That's fine though. And we're gonna take our pieces of silver off. Look at that. One of them is black, like I explained before. Look at the difference between the two. I mean, they're both black. One has just got weird stuff on it. And I'm gonna wrap them up just in that condition in a paper towel like that. That'll dry off in there. And then they go back in with my generator. And then we're gonna take this, make sure that the filter is on. And it's gonna take a while for this to actually be filtered out because it's going to pick up any particles that are floating around that see at the bottom 
It's got a bunch of stuff. That's fine. I know the water's clean. I know it was done correctly. I think those batteries were working very well. And then once we get it dripping through like that, we will have pure colloidal silver, and then we will store it in this container. And I could fill that whole thing up. And I have other containers too that I could actually fill any beer container would be fine. See how once it's, it's, it's like yellow once it's been filtered, coming through as a, like a yellow color. And that is normal. Everything is looking good. I can't believe it did it that fast. That was so awesome. We're just gonna keep doing this. And then uh, once we're done filtering it, we're gonna put it into our bottle. And uh, then we will have colloidal silver again for quite some time. That's about a half gallon of it. So that's enough to last the house for three months, I'd say. Anyways, this is Heather with Texas Microfarms showing you how to do your colloidal silver. And I'm gonna filter this out, put it in this bottle, and then we'll have it whenever we feel like we are getting sick or we can gargle with it. We can do anything we want. It's really good for you. Look up the benefits of silver. That's why they used to have silver spoons to eat on. And that's why it's called, you know, oh, you were a silver spoon baby, right? You always got to eat on the silver. That's because this, these types of medicines were reserved for the very wealthy. And uh, we can do it and make it almost for free. So this is Heather, Texas Microfarms, Colloidal Silver Class, over. Thank you.